Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we have an interesting algebra word problem. And kind of the topic here is, of course, it is an algebra word problem, but the kind of main idea is your ability to translate. Okay, what we want to do is translate a verbal sentence, okay, i.e. a sentence with uh, words and sentences into a variable or algebraic sentence and or equation. Okay, so that's kind of the main idea in this particular problem. Let's go ahead and actually read the problem. It says, if four is added to a number and this sum is doubled, the result is one less than three times a number. And what we want to do is find the number. So obviously there is a lot going on with this particular number. So you want to actually, um, you know, pause this and think about it if this is the first time you're seeing this problem. But if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to walk through the solution step by step. Also, if you need uh, math help with the course you're taking, test prep, or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to it in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so here is the prom. I'll read the prom again in a second. Uh, I will say uh, real quick, I do have what I call the rule of three, which is you should read a word prom in a minimum three times. So if you're kind of confused about this, you only read it once, well, that's not enough. So maybe you might want to just pause the video and work on this for a second. But we are looking for this particular number. And of course, there's all sorts of things going on with this number. Let's go ahead and take a look at the answer right now. What is the number? Well, the number is nine, okay? So that is the solution. All right, so if some of you were looking for some maybe fraction or decimal value, no, listen, you know, this problem worked out pretty nicely. So it worked out uh, with the solution being nine. Okay, so how'd you do? Well, if you got this right, that's outstanding. Matter of fact, let's give you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100% and a few stars. So you could tell your friends and family that you knew exactly how to translate a uh, verbal sentence into a variable equation and solve. And you were able to, uh, you know, if you think it's kind of like a competition, you're like, hey, that guy on YouTube, he's always trying to make problems that I can't solve. And I always do his problems right. Well, listen, if you're having fun with my uh, videos, if you are new to my channel, well, welcome. But if you've been watching my uh, other videos. I do try to make interesting prompts, all right? The type of prompts you're going to see on um, you know, various math quizzes and tests and whatnot. But listen, if you're just into math and you want to just practice math and you're kind of critical thinking and problem solving skills, well, you know, we want to have interesting prompts to do. So anyways, this is the answer nine. Now, if you're totally confused, well, just t uh, hold on for one second and I'm going to walk through this solution. So here is the problem. OK, so again, I mentioned something called the rule of three when it comes to uh, solving math word problems, whether they involve algebra, geometry, calculus, trigonometry, doesn't make a difference. You, you can't possibly solve a problem by just reading it one time. Right. So if you're in the habit of reading a problem because you're kind of in a rush, you're like, OK, I want to hurry up with this problem so I can move on to other things. We are almost guaranteed to make a mistake. So you have to kind of calm yourself down and read the problem one time. So we already read the problem once. The second time you read the problem is, you know, you want to start pulling out more information, okay? And then the third time you read the problem, you want to, you know, really understand what the question is. But in this particular case, we're just being told to find the number. All right, so we have this number in question, right? So we're looking for a number. We don't know what it is. And I kind of already said that we're going to be using algebra. We have an unknown value, right? So remember, if you're looking for an unknown value, that is, uh, you know, a, a gigantic hint that you will be using algebra. What we want to use is a variable. So I'm referring to this number as, you know, I'm using the um, word number. But what we want to do here is use a variable. So we're going to let n equal this number. Okay, so n is going to be equal to this number, some unknown value. And that's what a variable is in algebra, whether it's like a, b, um, X, Y, doesn't make a difference. These are symbols that represent a number, right? Now, you don't have to use N, you know, to solve this, but, you know, a good kind of uh, rule of thumb is 
if you're looking for, you know, a word and it starts with N, you know, uh, you know, use variables that make sense to you. So we're going to let N equal the number. And then what we're going to have to do is parse through uh, these um, sentences and make sure we can, uh, can construct expressions that represent what's going on. And then, of course, we want to solve for this uh, unknown variable n. So we're going to have to construct an equation. All right, so let's go ahead and go through this real super slow. And uh, we'll start off right here. Okay, so we have n plus 4. Now, what does that mean? Well, 4 is added to a number. All right, let's go up to our problem. We'll take it one little step at a time. So it says if 4 is added to a number. Now, again, I'm not using the uh, number anymore. I'm using n, right? So 4 is added to n. How can I translate this verbal sentence into algebra? Well, I can uh, do it this way. I could go 4 plus n or n plus 4. It's the same thing, all right? So this is 4 added to a number and a number n, all right? So that's the first part. But, of course, it gets more interesting. It says, and this sum. Now, what sum are they are we talking about? Well, we're talking about this sum right here. Okay, a sum is the result of adding two things up. Okay, or two more things. So, n plus 4. All right, so this is a sum, right? And we could put, we always want to put parentheses around this. So, and this sum is doubled. All right, so what sum is doubled? This n plus 4. So, let's go back to the problem. It says, if 4 is added to a number, or a number n, and this sum, i.e., this sum up here, this uh, n plus 4, okay, is doubled. Well, what does that mean to double something? That means to multiply it by 2, all right? So we're going to take this sum and double it. So we're going to take 2 times n plus 4. All right, so now let's go back to our problem. Again, what are we doing here? We're translating. We're translating verbal sentences, okay, with words and sentences, etc., into algebra. All right, so this sum is doubled. The result is, now this word is, is always the equal sign in mathematics, is equal to. So this is going to be our equal sign. So this is going to be on one side of the equation is, now what's on the other side? Well, this part right here, one less than three times the number. So three times the number, how can I express that? Well, if what our number is n, three times the number would be 3n, and one less than three times the number would be what? 3n minus 1, right? So that's what that is going to be right there. One less than three times the number will be the expression 3n minus 1. All right, so now what we have to do is construct an equation. All right, so we have all this expression, but it's not going to serve us any good unless we have... Uh, some way to construct an equation, and this is where this is is coming in. So all this right here, uh, this f 4 is added to uh, uh, a number, and this sum is doubled. The result is, this is our equal sign, 1 less than 3 times the number. So find the number. Well, we could find the number, but what we have to do is actually solve for n. So here we go. Okay, so this sum, so 4 is added right here. Let's just kind of read this. 4 is added to a number, and this sum is doubled. Okay, this is the sum that's being doubled, is uh, equal to 1 less than 3 times the number. So here we have this lovely equation, 2 times n plus 4 uh, is equal to 3n minus 1. All right, now anytime you hear the word sum or difference in mathematics, always, always, always put parentheses around that group. These, this is what we call grouping symbols in mathematics. And now what we have to do is simply solve this lovely linear equation. All right, now, if some of you out there are like, oh, totally confused, well, I'm going to suggest that you check out like my pre-algebra or Algebra 1 course because this problem is probably, you know, maybe, you know, a little bit too challenging uh, to start off with. You want to start off with more basic problems. But now let's go ahead and solve for n. So the first thing I need to do is the distributive property. So 2 times n is 2n. 2 times 4 is 8. And that's going to be equal to 3n uh, minus 1. So a couple different approaches I could take here. I'm going to just go ahead and subtract 3n from both sides of the equation. And that's going to give me negative n is uh, equal to, and I want to subtract 8 from both sides of the equation. That's going to be equal to uh, negative 9. Negative n is equal to negative 9. Now, if you don't know how, I'm going to erase all this. 
if you are looking at this, you're like, oh my goodness, not quite sure you went from here to here, then you absolutely need to brush up on your basic algebra skills. No big deal. Just remember, when you're doing math and you don't understand anything, just make yourself a little shopping list, okay? Just as you go to the store, you're like, oh, I gotta get some, uh, you know, coffee creamer. I need some potato chips. I need some paper towels. I need some whatever, da, 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 da. You make yourself a list. Uh, you know, you go into the store to pick up some items. Well, if you don't understand anything in math, same thing. Oh, I need to pick up some skills on solving basic equations. I don't need, make yourself a list because this is what you need to get. Okay. It's not, none of these items are going to get into your kind of, um, you know, your toolbox of math skills, unless you actually go get them and learn them. Right. But, uh, believe me when I tell you, they're not going to go away. All right. So again, hopefully you understand how this equation goes from here. And if you need, again, help with basic equation solving, I have tons of videos on my YouTube channel, but if you want to learn this in a more formal way, I would suggest checking out like my pre-algebra course. All right. So negative N is equal to negative nine. So you, we want to solve for n, we have a negative one n here. So we're just gonna simply divide both sides of the equation by negative one. So we get n is equal to nine. All right, so that is the solution. And what is the whole point of this problem? Well, some of you are probably saying, I'll never use this stuff in real life. Well, you know, you uh, could very well, you know, be correct, right? So some math, you know, uh, you're not going to use in your everyday uh, careers or, or jobs or, you know, life. I get that. But what you are using here is your problem solving ability, your critical thinking. And if you're a math student, if you're taking algebra, well, they need to know this stuff because this, this is really, really uh, critical. Okay. You know, you think about it. What is a math word problem, all right? An algebra word problem, a math pro a word problem. This is actual application of mathematics. Okay, why do you study math? We don't study math just to do a bunch of problems. You do it to apply to solve real world problems that can be described uh, using, you know, uh, sentences, right? You know, actual words, and then we translate that into mathematics and we solve. So this is really the kind of the essence of mathematics is to solve word problems. But if you need help with this kind of stuff, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.